Thanks for joining us again. I'm George Cruz, your host of The Senior Report. Today, we're visiting Delia Nursing and Rehabilitation Center and interviewing Personal Touch Home Health Agency and Veterans Home Care Home Health Agency, who've partnered up to provide services for our seniors. So I want you to try to stay tuned for the entire show because we've got lots of information for you that may be helpful for you as our senior or a caregiver of a senior who may need certain services like home health agency services or nursing care services. There's a lot going on around town since I've last seen you. Happy holidays to you all. It's December and uh, there's lots going on around town, like I said. Uh, December announcements for 2014. Um, senior citizen identification cards, ID cards will be issued in Linden residents 50 years or older at the Gregorio Center, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There's hypertension screening, senior citizen line dancing, knitting and crocheting for a cause, non-emergency medical transportation, arts and crafts. There's always so much to do with the, at the Gregorio Center. Uh, there's uh, ceramic classes, Wednesdays, uh, December 10th. The deadline to register is December 9th. I always like to mention these things because there's so much to do at the Gregorio Center and in Linden uh, as a whole. Um, since I last spoke to you, we have a new mayor and we want to congratulate Derek Armstead, mayor-elect of Linden, and wish the outgoing mayor the very, very best. Um, I'd like to try to interview Mr. Armstead in the future and so that we can get to know our, our mayor and hopefully that will be coming up within the next month or so. So now I'd like to take it back to Del Air Nursing and Rehabilitation Center and speak to Meg Lebetz and Evan Coltman from Personal Touch Home Health Agency and Veterans Home Health Agency. Thanks for joining us, folks. I'm your host of the Senior Report, George Cruz. We're taping today at Del Air Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, located in Linden, New Jersey, with two guests from Personal Touch Home Health Services, Meg Labetz, and Veteran Home Care Service, Evan Coltman. Meg uh, is the Marketing Coordinator for Personal Touch Home Services, and our show uh, tries to connect you with home health services products and services that will benefit seniors and their caregivers. So we uh, will talk briefly to uh, the Meg Labetz and Evan Coltman uh, from Personal Touch and Home Veteran Home Care Services. Uh, we'll start with you, Meg. How long has Personal Touch uh, Home Health Services been in business? Um, Personal Touch has been in business since 1974, uh, so 40 years. Um, we first opened in Jamaica, Queens, New York, and uh, we are privately owned and operated by a doctor and lawyer who are still actively involved in the business. And uh, we operate in 13 states. Very good. I know you haven't been with the company for 40 years, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in 1974. <laughs> what, what locations are you in in New Jersey? Um, we are in Neptune, Union City, Roselle Park, and Bloomfield. Well, it covers we have four a, offices. Covers yes. a, a <laughs> wide area of, of New Jersey. Yes. Um, and what type of payment sources does Personal Touch accept? Um, we accept some insurances. We accept private pay, um, veterans benefits, and we are one of the few home care agencies that do accept Medicaid. Um, so I would. Uh, we have a very large percentage of Medicaid and also diaphysis cases. Well, Meg, one of the things I want to do is I want to connect our seniors and their home caregivers with the with, with the, an appropriate referral. Um, our viewers uh, want to take down numbers, websites, but we also want to hear about uh, the services that you provide. And um, you call yourself personal touch, so I can imagine that um, your home health aides yes. have a, a special way of uh, caring for our residents. Uh, what services do you provide? Um, we provide mainly non-skilled care. Uh, basically, the services would be provided by a certified home health aide, um, and they would help in the activities of daily living, such as bathing, feeding, meal preparation, toileting, dressing, and transferring. 
basically all of the things that would enable a person to remain in their home. Um, okay. They're called the activities of daily living. Yes. So we always want to make sure that if you're watching our show, The Senior Report, that you're protected. Yes. <clears throat> you're well cared for. So are your home health aides and employees, uh, bonded employees, you do a background <clears throat> check, yes. drug screenings? Yes. So um, we run thorough background screens and we do vigorous uh, background checks and drug testing. Um, we also check their licenses uh, twice a month and um, they are bonded, <laughs> licensed and insured by the agency. So Meg, how do you go about hiring your employees? Basically, they come into the office and we meet them face to face and they're required to bring in their identification and their, um, their license. Um, they also complete a packet of information and they take some tests and uh, we initiate the process in that way. Um, if they meet those minimum requirements, then we proceed to an orientation. Uh, we do the check with the State Board of Nursing on their license, um, and we check at least three references, um, two uh, professional and one personal. Okay. Now, you, Personal Touch is accredited by CHAP. Yes. Can you explain what CHAP means and sure. why is that important to our viewers? Um, we are accredited by CHAP. They are the Community Health Accreditation Program. It means that this is basically another thing that sets us apart from other agencies. It means that we adhere with a set of quality and performance above the minimum standard. Um, we also work very uh, closely with Medicaid, um, so our offices are held to much stricter practices. Very good. So it is an organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you explain how the process works to get um, a family member care? Sure. Um, the initial process basically takes, we're able to initiate the care plan within 48 hours of receiving the referral. And um, basically we receive the referral, we follow up with a family member. If it's necessary, I will go to the patient's home or possibly the hospital, or we just consult with the social worker over the phone. Um, we take some very basic information and we start to investigate a payer source, whether it be private pay or Medicaid. Um, if it is Medicaid, we do ask that the patient has a Medicaid number that's already given. We don't really assist with them going about getting Medicaid, but if they are already given a number, we work with their um, caseworker if it's a managed Medicaid. Um, within that 48 uh, hours, we are able to get doctor's orders uh, for the home care and we can assess how many hours the patient actually needs. And uh, between the social worker, the patient, a family member, and us, we can get things rolling within 48 hours. Okay, Meg, so in a setting like this, we're at Delia Nursing and Rehabilitation <coughs> Center. Um, can a social worker from here contact you if a patient was admitted from a local hospital? Yes. And uh, they're ready for discharge. Does a social worker contact you yes. um, with the referral? Yes. So will you come in to see the patient? If, if necessary, um, I, I do, and, um, or you're able to fax the, uh, the social worker can fax the referral uh, to me or call it in or email it, and I do follow up very promptly. I take phone calls in the evening, I take them on the weekend, and we initiate some kind of plan, and it ties into our name, Personal Touch. Um, so every plan is different. We don't really follow the same plan for every patient because it's according to that patient's needs. Okay, so if you're discharged from a, a nursing home, a subacute rehabilitation unit after a surgery or knee replacement, hip replacement, or cardiac surgery, and you're going to need home health services, you can request that from your social worker at the subacute unit, um, with whichever unit you may be. We happen to be at Delay Nursing uh, Subacute Unit and uh, the social worker will refer you to a home health agency who may visit you here, uh, do a quick assessment and set things up for home health services at home. Now, you can tie other services in if you wanna maximize um, the services that are available to you. A lot of folks don't know what's available to, to them until they actually need the service 
and they're in a position where they're going to need a referral. Um, so that's why we have Evan Coltman here today. Um, so I didn't forget you, Evan, but <laughs> how did Personal Touch become involved and partner with Veterans Home Care? Um, we basically have had patients in the past from Veterans Home Care and Evan actually brought it to our attention that he thought it would be a great uh, thing for us to work together. And since we do visit a lot of the same places and have the same contacts, um, we're able to introduce both services together. Okay. And it's really been going very well. Right, right. Now, it's essentially what we're trying to do is relate to people that there is a funding source through utilizing VA benefits to help fund the cost of private duty home care services. Well, Evan, a lot of our seniors uh, are uh, veterans and um, are not aware of how to access these services. Can you help with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the first, the first challenge and the reason that I, I, I love doing stuff like this is to get the information out there. So that you know, veterans and surviving spouses of veterans know that they might be eligible for benefits from the VA to help fund their private duty home care. Um, again, uh, um, I've seen the regional director of a, uh, uh, a VA facility say that the aid and attendance benefit, which is what we're referring to, is one of the most underutilized, un unknown, most unknown benefit that there is that the VA offers. And why is that? You know, it's, it's just a matter of how much information is out there, how do we relay it to everybody, and this is really one of the, one of the great ways. So if you're a veteran or the surviving spouse of a veteran, you might be eligible for a benefit called, or commonly referred to as, aid in attendance. And uh, that's really what we want to make sure that, that people are exploring if they're eligible. So what does this benefit provide exactly? So the benefit is uh, essentially providing funding to help cover the cost of long-term care um, services. Uh, we're home care, uh, so that's obviously a long-term care service, but it could also fund or help fund the cost of uh, assisted living, and skilled nursing, and also daycare. Those are the, the major long-term care services that I, that I know of. So um, that's, that's essentially what, what people are struggling with, is to pay for those costs, which are reoccurring every month, and uh, difficult to come up with the funds to, to, to cover it. Right. Who is eligible for this service, Evan? So um, for, for this benefit in particular, there's three requirements to be eligible for it. And the easiest way to remember it is to remember the three M's. This is the way I like to remember it. Okay. okay. So you have your military requirement, your medical, and money. Okay. And let me just talk briefly about each three. Okay. okay. Military, veteran. Veteran had to have served at least 90 days active duty one day during a wartime period or the surviving spouse of a veteran that served, that met that criteria. That's military. Medical. Medical is the permanent and regular need for assistance with activities of daily living due to a non-service connected disability. And it's important to point out that this benefit is specifically for a non-service connected disability. And this is the challenge with most veterans that they don't know that they're eligible because they weren't service or there's no injury they have that was sustained during service time that they are eligible for this benefit. This is for specifically for a non-service connected disability. The third requirement is money, means or means. There is uh, financial limitations uh, limitations on both income and assets to be eligible for this benefit. So it's case specific. Um, it's not like Medicaid where you can give strict numbers. It's based on the individual's um, gross monthly income versus their unreimbursed monthly medical expenses. And of course, age and marital status plays into that as well. Uh, so that, that gives you a kind of a brief idea of who's eligible for it. And if you really want to see in depth if you're, if you're specifically are eligible for it, of course, you can uh, uh, give us a call or call George and he'll refer you to one of us. All right. So how long does it last for? And is it possible that the program might end because okay. of funding? Okay. Um, so, so we didn't really talk about what the, the, the actual dollar amounts or figures that it can, can, that it can fund for toward your, the cost of your 
long-term care, home care, day care, assisted living, skilled nursing is based on your status as a single veteran, a married veteran, or the surviving spouse of a veteran. There are three different amounts. So for a single veteran, the maximum benefit provides about $1,760 per month. That's the maximum amount. You can use that toward the cost of, of that long-term care, daycare, home care, assisted living. For a surviving spouse, it's $1,130. Uh, just went up cost of living 1.7%, so about $1,149, I think, this year. And then for a veteran that has a spouse, a married veteran, it's a little bit more. It's uh, $2,158 or close to $2,200. Those are the maximum benefits. Now, these are monthly amounts that will continue as long as you're staying in compliance, as long as these expenses continue, for as long as you need it. This is, not a, uh, um, this is for a permanent disability, so it's not a temporary benefit, and uh, it's a lifelong benefit. As far as it ending, uh, it would take an act of Congress to end or amend this benefit, so that would be uh, a very unpopular move. Not only unpopular, but how much does Congress really do nowadays? <laughs> yeah, probably would. Uh, how does one apply for this benefit, Evan? Uh, our, our seniors um, have caregivers at home, um, and they're going to need help in accessing this. So how does the senior or their caregiver, caregiver access uh, this service? Okay, so there are several different ways to apply. Um, there are um, veteran service officers that work for the county and state. There are veteran service officers that are um, in the nonprofit orgs like the Legion, VFW. Um, of course, agencies like myself, I'm a home care agency, but we have a VA accredited attorney, so we are able to assist people in applying. We do, we do the applications ourselves. Um, you know, the one thing I would say is if you're going to apply for the benefit, make sure to use a representative or somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to cost you anything. It shouldn't cost you anything. Uh, in fact, it's federally prohibited to charge a veteran for applying uh, for a fee for applying for veterans benefits. And of course, we don't do that. We're a home care company. We only we charge for home care and we use the funding from this benefit to help pay for it. Um, but, you know, the, like I said, the one thing I would say is if you're going to use Veterans Home Care, that's great, or use a, uh, a veteran service officer from the county, state, or one of the nonprofit orgs so that you're well represented in filing your claim. Because if you send a claim yourself and you've never filled one out before, chances are you're not doing it perfectly right, and uh, that's why the adjudication time can take seemingly forever. I see. Can you give me an example of how long it may take? Well, for, and I'll give you an example. We have, I'm, I'm uh, correcting a claim that somebody uh, did themselves with the help of a family member. It was filed in um, uh, June of 13, okay? So we are now in uh, the right. last month of 2014. Um, it is not even close to being adjudicated. Wow. So we're going to, I'm going to send in, and I saw the actual original application. It was just done incorrectly, sent to the wrong uh, uh, district um, uh, RO, uh, so we're going to send an amendment down to the Philly Pension Center and get it going. And we also can, if adjudication times takes a long time, we can also get the help of a congressman involved. Uh, Congress, all congressmen have con uh, congressional liaisons in the VA's uh, uh, regional offices that can help if if there is an exorbitant amount of time the VA is taking to adjudicate the claim. Okay. Um, so, if you are going to access uh, this veteran's home care services and applying for aid and attendance, you can try to do it on your own. It's a lengthy process. You may want to get someone, uh, an expert involved in it, like Evan Coltman and the Veterans Home Care, um, who can help navigate you through the process. Evan, is there anything that you want to tell our seniors and their caregivers, including your um, uh, contact information. Uh, sure. Um, Veterans Home Care, by the way, is a private company started by a caregiver. We have no VA affiliation. I just want to point that out. We are a private company, um, so we provide home care, but we help people apply for this benefit. First, see if they're eligible for it, and then apply for it, and then get it to fund the home care. So you can look, uh, look us up on our website at uh, veteranshomecare.com. Uh, you can also call our uh, 
our office number here in New Jersey, 973-400-1395. Um, and we've been open here in New Jersey for about five years. Uh, we started out at St. Louis 12 years ago, but um, I'm assuming everybody here is local that's going to be watching. Yes. So just call the office number, 973-400-1395, and we'll, we'll help you just to see if, if you just want to see if you're eligible, give us a call. We'll be happy to do it. And do you have a website that they they can access. Yeah, actually, yeah, the www.veteranshomecare.com, uh, spelled out all one word with the S, veteranshomecare.com. Very good. Thank Meg, you. if there's anything um, you'd like to get across to our seniors and their caregivers uh, today, including your uh, website and number and any other information you may want to sure. share with our seniors. Um, we also offer companion services in housekeeping, um, so that's really... Um, a good idea if somebody is also just coming out of the hospital and, and need that for short term. Um, companion is more of a social, uh, more than um, a medical based visit. Um, it would be shopping and maybe uh, some light meal preparation and maybe playing cards or watching TV. So we do do those services also. And um, I am the representative for all of New Jersey and I can be reached at 848. 3030902 or you can visit our website at www.pthomecare.com. And you know, just in case there's, you know, people might this is veterans home care and personal touch home care. Uh, if you're confused about the relationship or where we're both here, we actually do use we use personal uh, touch home care. We contract through our network of, of providers and this is how we provide con uh, home care all over the, uh, the state and most of the country mm -hmm. is by contracting with licensed home care companies, reputable ones that have been around a long time and, and, uh, and are proven in the community. So we have been using Personal Touch uh, for almost all five years that we've been here in New Jersey and uh, I, I would say that we've had, uh, and our clients have had a great experience. So we're actually contracting or subcontracting the home care um, after we have uh, vetted our cases believe that we have a good qualified case, somebody that's eligible for aid in attendance, and then we, uh, we do the application with the <clears> client, <throat> including a home appointment where we help fill it out, submit it, and then we contract the home care. We even fund it while we're waiting for the VA to adjudicate the claim, because it still takes several months, and then when they get the funds from the VA, then they pay for the home care service. So that's that's our relationship. Uh, it's fantastic, and that, that yes. uh, helps the uh, senior out for sure. So, Evan Coltman, Meg Labetz, I want to thank you both for appearing on the Senior Report and explaining to our seniors and their caregivers the services that you provide. Um, we try to bring you quality services and products through the Senior Report. Um, so, today, having a veterans home care uh, and personal touch is our way of reaching out to our seniors and their caregivers. Keep watching the show, and we'll see you again very soon. Now back to the studio where we'll give you an update on what's going on around town. Thanks for joining us folks. I'm George Cruz, your host of the Senior Report. Again, we try to bring you services and products for seniors and your caregivers. Please stay tuned to the Senior Report uh, as we uh, transition into a new year. Happy holidays to all of you. And we hope within the next month or so to visit and interview our new mayor, Derek Armstead. We wish the outgoing mayor the very, very best and happy holidays to you all.